I've got a rack of beef ribs here and they are frozen solid. In this video, we're gonna be smoking them from frozen to see how long they take and how they turn out. So for this cook, we're gonna be using our drum smoker and we're gonna get started by opening our lid and taking our cooking grate off. And then we're gonna take our heat deflector out. Then you wanna fill your charcoal basket up with either lump charcoal or briquettes. And then I'm just gonna bury a fire lighter in those briquettes and light it up. And now we've got about 10 to 15 minutes before those briquettes are gonna be ready. So we'll use that time to prepare our beef ribs. Now these beef ribs are frozen solid, so we're not gonna be able to trim them. That's fine, as I don't usually trim my beef ribs anyway. So we're gonna move straight on to seasoning them. I'm just gonna give them a nice, generous coat in some yellow mustard. Normally I'd just go a nice light coat, but because these are frozen solid, our rub's gonna to struggle to stick to the meat. So a heavier coat of mustard is gonna really help our rub stick. And then you wanna go ahead and get them seasoned up in your favorite rub. And don't forget, our range of rubs is available on our website, along with heaps of other stuff at lowandslowbasics.com.au. And now our beef ribs are ready to go, so we'll come back once our smoke is ready. All right, now our briquettes are burning nicely, maybe a little bit too nicely, because I got distracted, but that'll be all right. We'll shut our lid, we'll open up our top and intake vent, but I'm only gonna open that around halfway. I'd normally open it right up, but because those briquettes are burning nice and hot, this isn't gonna take too long to get up to temperature. And our smoking temperature for this cook is gonna be around 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius. And since we're doing something different with these beef ribs, which is smoking them from frozen, I'm gonna be looking for a few key things throughout this cook. The first being time. Normally a rack of beef ribs around this size will take six to eight hours. I reckon this one is gonna take 10 to 12 hours, maybe even more. We'll see, I could be wrong. The next thing I'm interested in is the smoke penetration. Is the smoke gonna be able to penetrate a frozen rack of beef ribs? So I'm interested to see the smoke ring at the end of this cook and I wanna see how the smoke flavor is too. I'm also keen to see how our bark turns out and I'm also very interested to see how the texture is on these ribs as well. I'm no meat scientist, but there's a few theories out there that suggest cooking meat from frozen or previously frozen will make it more tender. The theory suggests that cooking meat from frozen or previously frozen breaks down the connective tissue, which makes it more tender. I know some competition barbecue teams will only use brisket that's been previously frozen. So we'll see how these beef ribs go, but for now, I reckon our smoke is up to temperature. So let's get these on. So we'll open our smoker back up and then I've got some beautiful bourbon barrel oak chunks. I'm gonna get one straight on the fire and then another one just off, and then we'll get our heat deflector back in, and then I'm just gonna get a drip tray on our heat deflector, then we'll get our cooking grate back on, followed by our frozen rack of beef ribs, and then we'll shut our lid and let these smoke away. And now we'll wait and see how long these beef ribs take to get nice and tender, so we'll keep checking in throughout this cook. All right, we are about four hours into this cook now. These beef ribs are looking good, starting to get some nice drawback on them bones. That bark is coming along. Let's have a check of the internal temperature. Looks like we are right around 65 degrees Celsius or around 150 Fahrenheit. So these beef ribs still have quite a ways to go. So we'll shut our lid and let these keep going. Right, we're coming up to seven hours into this cook. We've got some really nice drawback on these bones now. We're just gonna check that internal temperature again. We are around the 85 degrees Celsius or 185 Fahrenheit mark. We've still got a little bit to go, maybe one or two hours more. So we'll let these keep going. All right, it's been a bit over an hour since we last checked in. So that puts us just over eight hours into this cook. And I reckon these beef ribs are ready. I'm actually really happy with that bark. There's no noticeable difference between if I had these fresh or frozen before I smoked them. I'm gonna double check our internal temperature and these are probing. Super soft. We are right around that 96 Celsius or 205 Fahrenheit. And no matter what you're smoking, whether it's beef ribs, brisket, a pork butt, they're all gonna be done at slightly different internal temperatures. For example, I've had beef ribs not be ready until they've reached around 99 Celsius or 210 Fahrenheit. But I am happy with these ones. So what I like to do is just put an under glove on and then I'll just put another glove on top. That way I won't burn my hands. And I'll get these beef ribs out and we'll get them onto some foil. And I can see in our tray underneath, we've got some beautiful rendered fat. We're not gonna let that go to waste. So I am gonna carefully lift that out as well. And I've just put that tray next to our beef ribs. We're gonna let them steam off for a few minutes just to stop that cooking process. And then we'll pour that rendered fat over, wrap our beef ribs up, and they can rest for a good half an hour to 45 minutes before we come back to slice and serve them. And then back to our smoker quickly. I'm just gonna get our cooking grate back on. While it's hot, I'm just gonna give that a quick brush down with this wire brush. Everything just comes off a little bit easier while the grate's still hot. And you should be able to pick up one of these brushes from your local supermarket. And then we'll shut our intake vent, shut our lid, and we'll shut our top vent as well, and that's gonna kill the fire. And these beef ribs have had a few minutes to steam off now, so I'm just gonna pour a bit of that fat right over the top and then we'll wrap these up nice and tight and then if you've got any rendered fat left over you can just strain that out jar it up and use that in a future cook all right our beef ribs have had a nice little rest but before we slice them up don't forget steak shooter beef jerky is out now 
I've been making jerky for almost 20 years and I couldn't be happier with this one. We use 100% Aussie grass-fed beef. There's so much protein in here, 42 grams per packet, low in fat, low in sugar. It's the perfect on-the-go snack and it's Australian made and owned. So if you love jerky, give this a go. It's available on our website now. All right, so let's unwrap these beef ribs and slice them up. That looks absolutely incredible. It's actually got a really nice smoke ring on there as well. So nice and juicy, good bark, good smoke ring. Let's have a taste. So nice and tender, that just pulls apart with ease. Wow, that is such a good beef rib. There's a really nice flavor on there, but I'm not sure if I'm tricking my brain into thinking there's not enough smoke flavor in there. Even though we've got a really nice smoke ring, I'm just not picking up as much of a smoke flavor as I expected. Don't get me wrong, that is still an incredible beef rib. So in terms of time, that rack of beef ribs definitely took longer. It's hard to say how long it actually would have taken if they were fresh. Maybe next time I'll have to do a rack side by side, but I'd assume it took at least an hour longer. And with the texture, I'm really not picking up a noticeable difference between the fresh or frozen. This has the texture of any other beef rib I've done. And the bark, as you can see, it's really nice on that rack of beef ribs. I don't reckon there's a big difference between fresh or frozen either but I do think going that heavier coat of mustard on top did help our rub stick to the meat which helped us get this nice bark. Honestly the only thing I'm picking up as a noticeable difference is the smoke penetration. Not so much for the smoke ring because we've got a really nice smoke ring on there it's just the smoke flavour. There is a very subtle smoke flavour there but definitely not as much as I'm used to. I think the biggest takeaway for me is I'm not going to stress if I've forgotten to defrost my meat especially if it's a rack of beef ribs and this would honestly work perfect on any cut you don't really have to trim so keep that in mind if you've forgotten to defrost your meat that that honestly didn't really make a difference at all. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you've subscribed to our channel because it really helps us out. But for now, that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.